97.3 City FM. Relevant Radio. Always. Let's do a bit of the national team. Now, at the national team, you work under coach Evram Grant. He's an experienced head. He's worked at Aston, he's worked at West Ham United, Portsmouth, Chelsea, where you currently play. Ghana has gone 33 years or 34 if you add this year without winning the Afghan trophy. You guys have just secured qualification to play in Gabon next year. Do you generally think that pressure is on the team to go to Gabon next year and bring home the trophy? Well, um, playing in Ghana is always um, pressure. We always have pressure because um, we, the players, want to do something for the nation and uh, the fans also want um, to see something from us. And we are also prepared for that. I'm going to start Baba Roman. Um, still with the AFCON because that's really, really important to a lot of Ghanaians. Now, there's an impasse between the fans of the national team and the players of the national team. Something that the players think more about money than the nation at hand. What do you make, or what do you think of this growing accession? Um, well, I don't think so. I don't think it's, uh, uh, we, we, we want money more than uh, playing for Ghana. Um, we could just say like, uh, we, we're gonna play for the nation for free. It's normal and we can do that. But I think it's um, something which has been written or something which is there that um, after each game, a win, maybe a win or a draw, then we, we get um, some money. But for me and I think most of the players, we can just come out and say, yeah, we want to play for the country, for the nation for free. And um, that wouldn't take anything from us well, because we love our nation. At the age of 21, you haven't played at the World Cup before. I mean, the Mundial, the biggest one, that's the biggest trophy, the brightest sports light in sports. But you are also aware that Ghana has gone almost 34 years without an Afghan trophy. Now, if you are pleased with one to pick, would you pick a World Cup choice at, uh, at the expense of an Afghan trophy, or you pick the other one? <laughs> I think I will pick the World Cup because um the World Cup is um, the biggest tournament we have in the world. And uh, yeah, I think I'll go for the World Cup. You made a big move from Augsburg to Chelsea last season. How do you rate your first season in England? Um, not so bad because they, uh, we had, I had um, some moment of joy and some moment of sadness also. Yeah, so I would say not too bad. But the very first day you went to the dressing room, there was Fabregas, Costa, Pedro, William, these were stars that you saw even from your time at home in Ghana. All of a sudden, you were sharing the same dressing room with them. Uh, for me, it was uh, I mean, uh, an amazing thing or amazing, uh, amazing moment for me. But um, as a professional player, you just have to gather your confidence. And I must say, the guys were so, so, so much um, very cool to me. And, uh, when Mikel walked in, he just said, hey, Ghana boy, how are you doing? And, you know, so we just um, started the jokes from there. And, and um, some few minutes back, Bertrand also walked in, and that was all. Yeah. We were just um, doing the African connection. How, do you take, how did you take, on a personal note, Jose Mourinho took you to Chelsea. How did you take his time of leaving Chelsea? Because some people feel that some players have suffered in the past when coaches that brought them actually leave the club? Um, I felt very, very sad because um, Jose, not being a, a manager, is a very interesting person and very, very good person. And uh, when I heard the news, I felt so, so bad. But um, as a professional, you just have to think that uh, this is not the end. You have to keep on working. And any manager that comes, Maybe you can get your chance again. At the time you signed for Chelsea, I'm personally aware that there was PSG, there was Madrid, there was Monaco, there were a couple of clubs that were picking up your signature. Given a second chance, would you still pick Chelsea ahead of all those clubs? Yes. Why? Because um, Chelsea was, I mean, the, the club who wanted to have me. 
and uh, I I was with the coach and the um, sporting director. I was always with them um, by text and by phone. Yeah, so I think you go where they needed me. One Ghanaian player has been linked to Chelsea this summer, Kojo Asamo. Have you spoken to him about this strong link? Um, not really, not really, not really. But I mean, uh, I'm, I'm sure in the in few days to come, we'll, I will have to talk to him and we'll see what happens. There's a new boss at Chelsea, Antonio Conte. He's a current boss of Italy. Um, I'm aware he came to Stamford Bridge to meet a couple of the players. Have you had the opportunity to actually meet him on a personal note? Yeah, I did. What was the convo like? Uh, we just talked about um, how the next season will be and um, how the tactics will be and how he wants me to play. And, uh, if, if I'm working very hard, then uh, yeah, I, I will have the chance. Amazing star, Baba Abdurrahman. Will you be at Chelsea next season? <laughs> I still have five years more contracts. Thank you very much, Baba Abdurrahman. So that was Chelsea and Ghana defender. Baba Abdurrahman speaking to us. I think that his story has got a lot to do. In the space of five years, Baba has moved away from just playing in Division Two football to playing in the Champions League. I bet you saw him play against PSG. He was one of the best players in that particular game. Up until next week, this has been another edition of a City Sports exclusive. Baba Abdurrahman.